Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 and 5 tutorial. So in today's video what we're going to be going over is creating Baptiste's Exo Boots Jump from Overwatch and Overwatch 2. So if you're not already aware of what this is you can see it on screen now of what this is actually going to entail and also if I were to hit play we can see what this is going to look like inside of Unreal Engine 4 and 5. So if I were to jump it would look normal like so but if I were to hold down crouch you can see we're charging up and then I jump we're going to have an elevated jump like so and this works for moving forwards as well. And if I don't charge it the whole way it's not going to be as big of a jump as you can see there. Now I've obviously got it charging up very quickly as that's how it is in the game as well but you can change how quickly it charges, how high you jump, how far forward you jump and all that good stuff. It's very very easy to customize and also if we were to keep holding control or holding crouch it will continually do this every time we land which again is the same in game. So this is what we're going to be going over and creating today so without further ado let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. And before we get into the rest of the video I just want to say we've set a goal for ourselves to try and hit 50,000 subscribers before the end of the year so if you do enjoy this content and you do want to see more of it please do consider liking and subscribing down below as it really does help me and the channel out quite a lot. So thank you once again and let's get right back into the rest of the video. So the first thing we want to do is we want to actually be able to crouch in our game. Now if you've already got this set up then perfect then you can use that but if you haven't we're going to do that now. So we're going to go to edit, project settings, go down to input and then we're going to create an action mapping naming this to crouch and then we're going to set this to be the keybind that we want. So if we open this up we can just press this button here and then press left control as that's what I want it to be for me. You can have this as left control, C, or it doesn't even need to be crouching, it can be any button you want, but this is how I'm doing it. So once you've got that set up, we can close this and then open up our character blueprint, which for me is control space to open the content browser, first person, blueprints, BP, first person character. Now in here, it's very, very simple. What we're going to do is right click and search for the action mapping we just created. So I named mine crouch and we want the action event crouch there. Then out of this, what we're going to do is pressed, we're going to get crouch, the character function we already have, and released is going to be uncrouch. Then if we select our character movement, and in the top right details we search for crouch, we need to tick can crouch under movement capabilities. We can compile, save this, minimize it, and if we hit play, you can see we can now crouch inside of our game. Perfectly easy to set up like so. And if you want to change how fast you move when crouched, what you can do is just again search for crouch in the character movement and then just change the max walk speed crouched from 300 to whatever to whatever you want so you can increase or decrease that. But for me it's going to be perfectly fine. What we want to do now is we want to do a bit more code off of this. So what we're going to do first is just above it we're going to right click and get event begin play. Now if you've already used this don't worry you can hold on S left click to get the sequence node connecting that into begin play then zero going to the code you already have and then one going to the code we're about to do. But since I've not got anything, I don't need to worry about that. So what I'm going to do is just create widget. Now we obviously need to actually make this widget. So let's hit control space, go to a folder which we want it in, right click, go to user interface, create a widget blueprint, create a user widget, and then name this whatever you want. So for me, I want this to just be simply called exo boots widget as that makes the most sense for me. Then we can press the use asset browser selection on our construction node here, so our create widget, and then we're going to right click the return value, promote to variable, and name this exo boots widget. We can then compile and save that. So we're going to set up the widget later, we've just created it here so we can actually get a reference to it. So now when we start the game, we're going to create this widget. What we want to do is when we start crouching, we want to actually put this widget on screen. So let's do that now. So what we're going to do is get a reference to our widget by dragging it in and holding control to get. Out of this, we're going to add to viewport. So now when the player starts crouching, it's going to be added onto their screen. And then if we drag out of this again and get remove from parent, connecting that into uncrouch, when the player stops crouching, it will be removed from their screen. So this widget is only going to be on screen when the player is crouching, as this is only just going to display the exoboots charge so the player knows how much it has charged. So again, they only need to see that when they're crouching, so when they want to be charging it. What we're going to do next is create a new variable, naming this one exo boots charge. 
and we're going to set this to be an integer. You can have it as a float if you want, but we don't need it to be, so an integer is perfectly fine. Then we're going to drag this out, holding control once again to get it. Out of this, we're going to get an add, so an integer plus an integer, and we're going to add five. Now you can set this value as whatever you want. This is the values I had at the beginning of the video that you saw me testing and playing out with. Obviously you can mess about with this as much as you want to get different values. So if you make this bigger, it will charge faster. If you make it smaller, it will charge slower. It's honestly just based upon what you personally want. Out of this addition, we're going to get a clamp integer with the value being our addition, the minimum being zero, and our maximum being 100. So we're going to be charging up to a maximum value of 100. And then we can set our X attributes charge, so drag it in holding left alt, connecting that into return value, and the execution into add to viewport. So we're going to be adding five onto our charge and setting it, making sure it doesn't go above 100. Now obviously this is only gonna do it once, so we do need to loop this. So what we can do is right click, add a custom event, naming this charge exo boots like so, connecting that into there like so. Then out of the set, what we're gonna do is hold down D, left click to get a delay, connecting that into there with the duration being 0.01 seconds. This just means it's going to increase it every 0.01 seconds, so it's nice and quick and nice and smooth. Then we're gonna hold down B, left click to get a branch with the condition being coming out of the set X of each charge getting a not equal to, so that is an exclamation mark equal, and set this to 100. That goes into re the condition of the branch, and the true of the branch then does call function charge exit boots. So what we're doing is we're going to be looping this, so increasing the exit boots charge all the way up until it reaches 100. So if it's not equal to 100, it's gonna charge, but if it is equal to 100, it will then stop charging. So it's gonna continually charge until it is fully charged. So I hope that makes sense. And that is all we need to do to charge it. But once again, if we go back to when we uncrouch and we're removing the charge from our screen, we also need to reset the charge back to zero. So we can drag in this, holding Alt to set it, and just leaving that as zero like so, so it's going to reset our charge. We can compile and save that like so. And then we're gonna do two more things here, which you don't need to do, but it just makes it work a little bit nicer and a little bit better for the user. So if we go back to the beginning, so our input action crouch, just in front of this, what we're gonna do is right click and get event on landed. Out of this, we're gonna hold down B, left click to get a branch. So we're gonna be checking if something is true when the player lands. And we're also gonna right click and get player controller. Out of get player controller, we're going to get is input key down, press the key and then press left control or whatever button you have for your crouch input action, so how we're gonna be charging. Make sure this is the same key in here, and that return value will go into the condition of the branch. So what we're doing here is basically when the player lands from their jump, if they're still holding down the button to charge up their exo boots, it's going to then restart the charge, so true will go into crouch off of the input action crouch there. So again, if they're still holding control, so they still want to charge again, it will automatically start doing that once they have landed which is then gonna make it a lot better for the user. So that's something we call UX or user experience. It just makes it a little bit nicer. We'll compile and save that. And one more thing I'm gonna do is make it so the player can't start charging again when they're in the air. Now, this won't actually affect anything. So if the player does charge it again when they're in the air, they're not gonna jump while in the air because we've only set it to jump once, not double jump. However, the charge will come up on screen so it will look like they're charging even if it's not going to affect anything, the player still doesn't want to have to see that. So an easy fix for this is to drag the input action crouch out a little bit, drag in a reference to the character movement, and out of this we're going to get is falling. This is obviously returning a boolean value, so we want to hold down B, left click to get a branch, with that being the condition. This branch is going to go into pressed of the input action crouch, with false going into crouch. So if the player is not falling, i.e. they're not in the air, we can then start to charge it. But if they want to charge it while they are in the air, it's not gonna do anything. So I hope that makes sense as to why we've just done that. It's just gonna basically mean the player can't charge it while falling or already in the air, so it just makes it look a lot nicer again. Mechanically, it doesn't change anything, but visually it does. So we'll compile and save that, and that is now all we need to do to charge and uncharge our exo boots. 
what we need to do now is actually be able to jump. So this is actually very simple. What we're going to do is find our jump code which you should already have. For me it was over here in a comment and I've just moved out and deleted the comment. So what I'm going to do is move stop jumping down a little bit as we don't need to mess with that and we're going to move jump out over here. We're also going to disconnect jump temporarily. What we're going to do is drag out the character movement so get that in there and out of it we're going to get is crouching with this going into a branch so hold and B left click to get a branch with that going into pressed and the condition being is crouching if this is false we're going to go into our jump function so if we are not crouching when we want to jump we're going to do a normal jump but if we are crouching when we want to jump we want to do our special exo boost jump so after true first things first we need to uncrouch because the player cannot jump while they are crouching so we just want to make sure they're no longer crouching. After that, what we want to do is we want to make the player jump and jump using the charge we have. So what we're going to do is actually use launch character instead of jump as it gives us a bit more control over the velocity of said jump. So if we come out of uncrouch, we're going to launch character like so, and we're going to right click on the launch velocity and split the structure pin. Then we're going to right click, get velocity, and this is going to get the velocity of the player right click return value and split the structure pin. So now we have the X, Y and Z of both launch character and get velocity. The X and Y is just going to be connected straight in from velocity to launch character and the Z is where we actually want to do our exo boots. So what's going to happen is we only want to change how high up the player is jumping. Going forwards and backwards will be done proportionally anyway based upon this so we don't need to mess about with that. So this is very simple. All we need to do is drag out of return value Z and get an addition node and we're just going to add one. The reason why we're doing this is because when the player is going to try and do their exo boot jump their velocity on the Z should be zero. So if we try to modify that we're going to be multiplying so it will always be zero. So we just want to make sure it is one so we can actually modify this value. So I hope that makes sense and it will probably make more sense when I do the rest of the code now. So out of this addition node what we're going to do is get a multiply. And again, this is why it needs to be 1, because if we try to multiply it at 0, it's always going to be 0. And what we're multiplying this by is going to be our exo boot charge. So we're going to get our exo boot charge. Out of this, get a multiply, connecting that into multiply by float there. And then this multiply is going to go into the launch velocity z. So again, I hope this all makes sense as to why we're doing what we're doing. The only thing we need to change now is how much we are multiplying the charge by because you could just connect the charge straight in there without multiplying it by anything. However, you're likely going to get a very low value. So a value I found was good was multiplying by 12. Now what I might do as well is actually just convert this pin to an integer. You don't need to do it, but I just want to. Now where I've got 12 from is just from trial and error earlier, testing out different values, seeing what works best. And I found that I personally think 12 is pretty close to what it is in game. But again, you can increase this or decrease this. And as I said earlier with the timing of the charge, what I'd recommend doing is just changing the values and seeing what works best for you and what you want in your game. But that is the values which I've got and I'm using for this video. And so that is how we are launching or jumping the player using our exo boots charge. The only other thing we need to do is connect the launch character into the remove from parent here. So the same as when we uncrouch, we're removing the charge from the widget. So when we jump, we're no longer seeing it. And we're also resetting the charge back to zero. So let me just move this about so it makes a little bit more sense for me and I'll move this bit over here like so. And I think this is gonna work perfectly. So what I'm gonna do is select all this up here, hit C to comment it, and I'm gonna name this charge exo boots. And then this under here, I'm gonna comment naming exo boots jump. That's just gonna help me memorize what all this does without having to search through the whole code. I can just take a quick glance and see what it does. So let's compile and save that. And we can close this as that is all we need to do to actually charge our jump and perform our jump. The only thing left to do now is to actually tell the player how much charge they've got. So to do that, we're gonna open up the widget we created earlier. In here, we're gonna go down to panel and add a canvas panel onto our widget. And then we're going to add in a progress bar onto that canvas panel. Now I've already created some icons for this progress bar. So I'm gonna hit control space, open my folder and I'm just gonna drag these in. So I've got Baptiste charge fill and charge empty 
and all I've done is I've basically just recreated what it is in game. Now you can obviously create your own ones and I would recommend it because obviously this is used by Overwatch so I wouldn't recommend using them in your own game, I'd say to make your own. But you can see I've got these two here like so, they're basically the same as they are in game and I've used the same colours as well just because I'm recreating it. So we'll close those and then what we're going to do is select our progress bar and we want to change the style of this. Now you obviously don't need to do what I'm doing here and use custom images for this, you can just have it as a progress bar as well if you wanted. And if you do want to do that, the process is the exact same, just don't add in any images here. So the background image I'm going to have as Baptiste Charge Empty, and the fill image I'm going to have as Baptiste Charge Fill. We're going to go down under progress, and what I want to do is I want to have the bar fill type from left to right to bottom to top. So it's going to fill up from bottom to top as it does in game as well. You set this to be whatever you want. Then we're going to go down again under appearance and fill color and opacity and I'm going to set this to white just because I'm using my own colors on my images here. If you're not using your own images, set this color to be whatever color you want it to be. Then what I'm also going to do is resize this to be the correct size I want. So I made the size of this 125 by 46, which again is pretty similar to what it is in game. So I'm going to set the size X of my progress bar to be 125, the same as my image and size Y to be 46, again the same as my image. Then I'm just going to move this to be where I want on screen. So let's set the anchor to the bottom middle and I'm going to hover over that to line it up perfectly in the middle and then just move it down to be where I want once again. So I want it to be roughly here, that's going to be fine for me and I'll move the anchor on top so it stays in the correct position on screen. And I'm going to compile and save that and now we have this appearing on screen but this isn't going to actually have our charge in here, so we do need to set that up as well. What we're going to do is select our progress bar, go back to progress percent, hit bind, and hit create binding. Then before we do anything in here, we're going to go to the event graph, delete event tick and event pre-construct, and we're just going to use event construct. And what we want to do is we want to cast to our character. So we're going to drag out of this, and cast to, for me, it is BP first person character, like so with the object being get player character. Now if you are doing a multiplayer game, you might want to set this up slightly differently. However, I'm doing this just for single player, obviously, as I've not replicated anything. We're then gonna right click as BP first person character, promote a variable, naming this character reference, like so. We can compile and save this and go back to our binding or our get percent zero. We're gonna drag this out a bit, get in our character reference. Out of this, we're going to get exo boots charge or whatever you named it we want to then convert this to a float so i'm going to drag it into the return value and then disconnect it like so and then what we're going to do is get a divide and just divide this by 100 or divide it by the maximum charge you have so again i clamped it at 100 so it goes from 0 to 100 of my charge whatever the maximum number for you is input that in here like so and then connect it into the return value we'll compile and save and now this is going to actually display our current charge inside of the charge on screen. So if we to close this, hit play, we can then test this out. If I were to hold control, it appears on screen and you saw it filled up there like so. And if I were to then jump, it's going to disappear off screen and we have a nice elevated jump like so. And if I were to hold control and I'm still holding it now, when we land, it's going to do it again perfectly like so. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my character blueprint and just slow this down how quickly it charges to just to show you that as well so let's set this to a value of one instead of five you'll notice it charging much much slower you can actually see it working there but everything else still works the exact same it just charges slower let's put that back to five and then i'll also modify the height so let's put this as 20 instead of 12 and you should see we'll jump a lot higher as you can see here so those are the values you can change and as you can see it's also very very easy to change as well so let's reset that back to 12 and I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. All we've done is we've set up Baptiste Exo Boots Jump inside of Unreal Engine 5 and as you can see it is working perfectly for what we want it to do. So thanks so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.